Here we go in regards to Jasmine, straight from the one and only Neo X Tricks. Give him a follow over at Baina A17. Um, let's see how he's doing. Did he tick up a little bit? Yeah, he's at 625. So that's cool. Glad to see he's doing well. All right, let's address something that you may have never been aware of. So Neo X Tricks talks about this right here, Borks, right? They are Jasmine's first partner, okay? And it says, here is an interview of the CFO back in 2021 at the last news they were basically developing what? An AI Edge smartwatch and develops an IoT mobile 5G platform. Now, recently we shared with you guys that back in 2017, uh, Jasmine was creating that 4G LTE smartphone, okay? Obviously, we're well, you know, big difference compared to in the innovation of 2017 where we're at now. But you like the idea that, hey, they've been there. They've done that. They worked on a few things when it comes to the Internet of Things. We're going to show you some of these interviews. It's chopped up a bit. I understand how you had to do this because of you know, Twitter is. We're going to jump into all of it. Some things that you may not have been aware of. And I love the deep dive info from Neo X Tricks. Smash that like. Here we go. My pleasure for being here and thanks for having me on. Borks Technologies is an Internet of Things company focusing on software development services and products that provide Android-based smart connected devices and cloud service solutions. Borks operates in China, India, the United States, and internationally. For viewers new to the story, Anthony, please give us an overview of Borks. Thank you, Craig, for that introduction. Borks Technologies was formed in 2007. We have early access of Google's Android software, even before Google open sourced the software. We pride ourselves and call ourselves the king of Android. Right now, we have both the Android license for phones and tablets, as well as the Google Wear operating system for wearables. We are also a Qualcomm portfolio company, which means Qualcomm is a shareholder of Borg's technologies. We are also a contractor for Qualcomm uh, for software development. We are a licensee of the Qualcomm mobile technology, which is upgradable to the 5G license by early next year. One example of a turnkey project we have done for our customers is a tracker for Best Buy. Speaking of your competitors, what are some of the advantages that Borks has over those competitors? The fact that we are a contractor of software writing for Qualcomm, and we've been doing that for six or seven years. Because of that, we have early access to the technology that is available uh, from the latest and the greatest Qualcomm chipsets. And that's why we'll be able to develop for our customers and customize the functionalities faster than our competitors. Our software team is in Bangalore, India, and our hardware team is in China. Microelectronics manufacturing um, has to be from China as the supply chain there in China is very sophisticated and adequate. I don't see that going to other places in a very short time. So we are anchored in a very good position with software development, with the best of the best uh, in India, and then the hardware manufacturing is all of our uh, team in, in China. As the world's economy opens up in the All right, let me show you the next part. This is good stuff, guys. You may not have been aware of this at all. Um, we're going to show you the next part of this interview. There we go. All right. Share it in a way for you to see it, obviously. All right. Development with the best of the best uh, in India, and then the hardware manufacturing is all of our uh, team in, in China. As the world's economy opens up in the wake of the COVID pandemic, what catalysts can investors expect to see from Borks? I think we're already seeing a faster economy uh, recovery than we originally anticipated. I mean, last year it hit us and it hit us hard. Uh, but I, I think we are getting back to pre-COVID days, uh, in uh, about halfway to pre-COVID days within the year 2021, and a full recovery in terms of our business activities in the year 2022. Not only that, the 5G technology, it's all built out. 
the the uh, network is by and large ready in all metropolitan areas in the United States. For our customers that are ready to deploy the 5G technology, we are ready uh, to customize software, making use of the Qualcomm technology and be able to deliver that in a very quick time. It's our founder, he's Canadian. He's still the chairman and CEO today. He's an ex Motorola guy and he has also spent a lot of time with UT Stockholm. Harish Ramana is our executive vice president and head of software. He's also ex Motorola. He has 20 years experience in software design. Simon Sun, another executive vice president of ours, he's head of hardware, supply chain and manufacturing, has more than 20 years of experience in manufacturing out of China. Myself, MBA from UC Berkeley, I pride myself uh, in spending more than 30 years in corporate finance and I'm a local San Francisco guy. I've been living in San Francisco since 1969. To recap, Anthony, what is the main takeaway for investors? Why should investors take an interest in Borks today? Well, I think we're recovering from the pandemic rather rapidly. Uh, I believe we're going to get back to about 50% of pre-pandemic levels in the year 2021, and we expect to fully recover uh, in the year 2022. Uh, augment with that is the rapid deployment of 5G technology. We're ready, the network is ready, and our technology partner, which is Qualcomm, uh, is ready. We currently have the uh, license to the uh, Qualcomm software, which will be upgrading to the 5G chipsets in early part of 2022. So we're ready to rock and roll when customers come to us and have need for 5G devices. It is a very interesting story, Anthony. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, it was my pleasure. All right, so he says they're ready to rock and roll, right? That sounds all great. Um, oh, second, let me go, go to the next part. So I decided obviously to do what I do. You guys know where I'm going with this and that is to look more into this, right? And you know, there's a few things were referenced, maybe you weren't aware of it, but you like the idea that this is a key partnership with Jasmine they're 5G ready to go. Now, on yesterday's outline, we talked about how Jasmine was 4G ready to go. And some people were like, well, what happened with that, right? Well, maybe that just didn't work out for the time being. But you better believe, I think, with 5G, every you know everything's 5G at this point, right? Um, so let's jump into what we have in regards to Borks and why you should pay attention to it, obviously. Um I don't cite everything from Wikipedia, right? You're not supposed to, especially at the collegiate level. But for the purposes of knowledge, we're going to share this with you because there's some nice info. So number one, we're always talking about Jasmine when it comes to IoT, right? Internet of Things. You love how this has started off from the get-go. Borks Technologies, Inc. is an Internet of Things manufacturer. Okay, cool. They have made smartwatches and is publicly traded. Remember how, all, you know, like a few months ago, we talked about Jasmine and there was one key thing in regards to uh, a smartwatch. I think this might be their plug, right? At the end of the day, I can't confirm it, but if they're a partner, you kind of go with who your partner, you know, what they provide and, you know, what they present in regards to the Internet of Things. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get into, um, excuse me, everything in regards to the history but what i do like you know especially like for people like uh mike cornwell was talking about you know he was not big on the whole idea of you know androids and so on um but look at this you know they've been a member of the open handset alliance since 2008 uh boris is notable as the developer of the o phone not the iphone maybe more what the heck is the o phone it's a mobile operating system running on the linux kernel interesting right we know that linux is basically open source, you know, uh, free operating system as it costs you. Um, it's based on technologies initially developed by Android, right? A firm later purchased by Google and worked on, on the Open Handset Alliance. Ophone OS has appeared only on chi China's mobile phones and software. But the key thing is, again, like you mentioned, they go with China for numerous reasons, probably because of cost and supply chain issues. Getting more into this, um it goes into a few more key things i do like this bork 
Borch, excuse me, has brought it. Let me just double check. You can see this. You can. Borch has brought its O phone software to the U.S. That's crucial because a lot of you guys have felt as though, man, Jasmine and their partners, it's all like Asia. Here's a partner finally where you see literally right there, plain as day. And I know this is Wikipedia, all right, and we could look more into it, but you know, yeah, plain as day. Software to the U.S. under the name Android Plus. Borgs provided software under the Android Plus branding for who? Dell's lineup of smartphones in the U.S. So, guys, bottom line is this. We have talked in the past about Jasmine in regards to Transcosmos. And what stands out also is that contract with Transcosmos, that is a um, call center. They have multiple cons, uh, call centers all over Southeast Asia and so on. So I, in the past, have referenced the concept of all you need is Jasmine to blanket these call centers with secure blockchain PCs, whether it's through Avita or something like to the esque of, you know, like a, a, a Dell S type platform. Another example, plain as day, boom, right there. So branding for Dell's lineup of smartphones in the U.S. I feel as though when we talk about mass adoption, these personal data lockers through these PCs, through something like a, like a Dell, if you will, this is the plug, like I always say, this is the connect. That's why I'm bringing it to you guys. And I love the idea that we have people that are part of the community, like Neo X Tricks, who take the time to look more into the nitty gritty. When we talk about the accumulation phase, am I going to complain about the current price levels where I'm going to recognize, you know what? I don't want to accumulate when everything is going to the moon. No, that's how you, everybody gets wrecked. Don't want to get wrecked and accumulate when Jasmine's over 50 cents or dollars. So no, I'm going to take advantage of 0 0.003 and some change. Absolutely. Getting more into this. There's us all, all these key things, right? But yeah, establish strategic partnership with Qualcomm. And I will point that out. So in regards to Qualcomm, let's pull them up for a second because that is a strategic partner. Again, plugs with other plugs, right? Qualcomm. I know a lot of you guys know about Qualcomm. It's an American multinational corporation headquartered, of course, in San Diego, incorporated in Delaware. But look what it mentions, creates semiconductor software and services related to what? Wireless technology, owns patents critical to 5G and even 4G. So mobile communication standards. Here at CTM, we always cover what standards are in what. Qualcomm, of course, established in 1985, but that's beyond the point. The key thing is this is a real true plug, if you will. Um, let's get more into the more recent did you know that basically uh, back in, let's see here, uh, May of 2023, Qualcomm announced their intent to purchase Israeli fabulous chip making company, Autotox, for reported $350 to $400 million. Why point that out, right? That has nothing to do with Jasmine. But the key thing is understanding, is this a big connector? Is this a big partnership? Not for Jasmine directly, but for one of their key partners, which is obviously Borks. Yes, you want to have a connector, if you will, that is worth a lot of money and could raise a lot of capital and do some big things. We talk about mass adoption. You need the bigger players. That's why we showed you that outline earlier when it came to Bitcoin ETFs and so on, right? We want the institutional money. Follow the money. Here's a perfect example of following that money. All right, getting more into Borks and what they're all about and so on, right? So I want to share this with you guys. And this comes straight from Jasmine US. Um, and let me see, why is it not sharing? That's weird. Um, I'm going to share it one more time. So maybe you didn't see the previous thing, and I apologize for that. Sometimes the stream yard gets delayed. Here it is. And this is a piece from Jasmine US, and this was all the way back on March 26th of this year. Now, in regards to Borks, because I don't think a lot of you guys know about Borks. Maybe some of you guys do and some of you don't, and it's okay. We could always do a refresher, and this is good stuff. So Borks Technologies, Inc., a Jasmine partner, won a contract with a prominent North American company to develop and manufacture an 
Android 5G rugged waterproof handheld device serving industries like agriculture. Yeah, shout out to Mr. Magic Power. Remember when we did that whole deep dive about the rice crop consortium? Isn't it beautiful how everything comes back in full circle? You know, say what you want, but when it comes to deep dive research, the beautiful thing about it is it never gets outdated. There's no time stamp on it, right? Maybe recent news has like, you know, hey, man, somebody else re report on it. But what I love about this type of research and sharing some of this, again, it comes all full, full circle. So if you're brand new to our show, brand new to our platform, don't know what Jasmine is and so on, again, I would advise you to go back into a recorded video section and look up that thumbnail that says Jasmine, the Rice Crop Consortium. Because if anything... Look at this, guys. Boom, right there. Okay. So, yes, service industries like agriculture, oil, and mining, utilities, and safety. The device will feature a 5G chipset and is ideal for data collection. Hmm. Data collection. Now, gee, is it rocket science here? Who is like the king of, you know, personal data management? Right, Jasmine through data democratization, but especially when it comes to the main utility layer of that PDL, that personal data locker. Hmm, very, very cool. Borks, U.S. operators include who? Big players like AT&T, who I switch from. I'm not a big fan of AT&T, but I understand they're still the biggest name when it comes to, you know, phone service, right? Sprint, T-Mobile, and even Verizon. Now, there's a source here. But look at this, and this is under the Borg's umbrella. AT&T, Airtel, China Telecom, China Unicom, China Mobile. Basically, China really stands out. Verizon, even T-Mobile, Sprint, Vodafone. Say what you want, but remember how I consistently cover the Quant Jasmine connection? Vodafone, like we talked about before, and again, <laughs> The research is there for you. Go into the catalog section, recorded videos, quant, where it says Vodafone, confirmed. So you love how all this comes together, but what's the key thing? Strategic alliances across the board, right? I, was I planning on doing a, a another thing in regards to the quant connection? Call it what you want. No, I was not planning on that, but it's another feather in my hat, if you will. You know, I don't put feathers in my hat or a notch in my belt in regards to consistently showing you guys examples of the quant connection. That's not a BS connection. Vodafone, like I mentioned earlier, should be treated and looked upon as how you would look at Verizon here in the United States. Vodafone for Europe. Again, the quant connection. It's already there. Okay. You can check out the deep dive. That would take me a while to get more back into that. Now, what I want to also show you here is this other part. And this is good stuff. And basically speaking, we were talking about that strategic alliance or partnership, right? This is cited from Reddit, and we do this sometimes. So we talked about the concept of a Jasmine smartwatch, right? And this double this time I will double check that you can see it on the screen because you know, again, we're gonna have some StreamYard issues. StreamYard is our software platform for the live feed and so on. So if you look at the early strategic partners from their roadmap, just in case you guys forgot. You know, and it's okay. I mean, who's looking at a roadmap from the beginning every single day? Well, what do you want to do today, Bill? Well, what do you say we open up that Jasmine white paper or the Jasmine original roadmap? And uh, yeah, let's look at that every day. Nobody does that, right? So we give you a refresher. You'll notice if you were going to do that, that Boris is listed and you will find their logo in the strategic partners section. 8.3, just in case you're like, oh my God, where's my Eagle Scout badge? Yeah, section 8.3. Who are Borks? Well, like we said, Borks is a company that designs fitness sensors and even smartwatches, among all the other things we showed you from their wiki site. We get more into it. I'll take you right to the site because at, earlier we were at what? We were at the Wikipedia section. Here's specifically that mention about the smartwatch. Um, and if anything, here it is. Realize your imagination by Boris E2E turnkey wearable solutions. Because you leave even like an example of what it's going to look like. 
software and services watch software and companion apps they have an ecosystem app store sdk software development kits vertical solutions kids safety elder care maybe i need to get one of these for my dad i don't know messaging hardware Borch smart watches oem smart watches they have sports watches but the key thing is all this stuff tied into what the internet of things how so activity track notifications that we're missing interchangeable uh, compatibility intelligent connectivity social interaction like this has jasmine written all over it without even having jasmine written all over it. and to be honest if i went to this site and i was like what the heck is borks i would be reading up about it and i would say to myself wow these guys ought to partner with jasmine and then i would find out yeah they really are funny how that works so this part about iot solutions let me show you this for a second smart appliance solutions i'm gonna show you this part because there's three sections ivi m2m and smart appliance let's take a look at some of the appliance see how this is all worded see how beautifully like how it flows to a sense you guys understand where i'm going with this i understand that we only have like a few people here tonight and it's okay if anything you guys can catch up on the replay or you can watch this chopped up version but the key thing is we're talk you know excuse me we talk consistently about society 5.0 smart cities look at what's referenced here literally what smart city smart appliance solutions they have a goal to create more intelligent interconnected planet Borks technologies possesses a unique ability to integrate dispar uh, disparate operating systems while building a seamless bridge between cloud and device hmm. why wouldn't they want to partner up with um, a management type thing that jasmine has right personal data management uh, and especially that bridge between a cloud and device like i always say jasmine's all over that like a fat kid on cake yeah this partnership simply makes sense it's like a no-brainer so you can get more into this you know they give you examples about what they do with androids they give you an example of how this is all coming together and i would definitely encourage to do so right um and again this is straight from the board site but they have other smart devices smartphones and tablets i'm sure that part last borks automobile infotainment again guys the key thing is this everything that you see here is literally tied into smart cities you know the whole concept of society 5.0 again it just it simply makes sense to be partnered up with these guys so i'll show you this last part before we get more into what we have here smartphones and tablets is the part that i want to highlight because my thing is we understand where jasmine is going here in the future and we showed you those examples of the 4t you know was it the um, uh, 4g lte smartphone concepts back in 2017. again where, where you know where is jasmine going to go with this you know here in the near, near future that's the bottom line so they have this whole use case here and so on um but what's mentioned in regards to um you know this oh i got an emergency alert what the heck is this about uh there's a big dust storm coming into phoenix anyway i'm inside so i think i'll be all right <laughs> we provide bundled gms package with our smartphones and tablets as we create innovative differentiated devices for enterprise and consumer Again, when we're talking about, you know, Qualcomm and stuff like that, that would be more towards the enterprise side of things. And they also do consumer. Um, and remember how we also talk about Jasmine? This is the juicy stuff, in my opinion. Think about it. Jasmine, back in 2017, and I'll re-remind you just in case you just tuned in. Back in 2017, I had that 4G smartphone technology, right? Like a you know concept prototype or what you want to call it they were going to do something show you the examples and i even have it primed and ready to go just in case you didn't see that check this out for yourself all right here's the reference jasmine corporate event individual developments core enterprise again enterprise uh scroll down to this part there it is right here back in 2017 what did they do they obtained the regulatory certification of the radio wave and electrical communication business of the core 
communication model of the what 4G LTE Android single board uh, computer in Japan. It was officially recognized by the Industry Association. It, Jasmine always kills it when it comes to recognizing, uh, recognizing, excuse me, having organizations recognize them, right? Whether it's the JVCEA to be regulatory compliant or the Industry Association uh, in regards to these d devices that contribute to the Internet of Things and so on. And they were officially, you know, they officially began to provide samples. Here's one of the samples. Again, just in case you didn't see it. I mean, that's just a, a basic board, but you get the idea of what Jasmine was able to do. They started, of course, to introduce blockchain tech to the IoT module, becoming the cornerstone of Jasmine's two core services. And we know this already. Smart Knowledge Communicator, which is SKC, and of course, Smart Guardian, right? Jump back to why this is a big deal and show it to you once again. It's just in case you forgot. Because again, when I connect stuff, I want to show it full fledged, come out of the frame. That example of LTE model 2017, again, what you see on the screen, plain as day, right here, LTE model. So you understand the significance in regards to that. And again, mobile operators and services and application packages, you already have Vodafone there. So we already have interoperability provided through Quant's overledger for Vodafone. So when I say things that, you know, guys, this is not nothing burger. This is more than just speculation. Again, it's the partnerships. Time and time again. I'll come back into the frame. So there's that. Um, customizable, multiple purse, you know, all this stuff, right? You can do a lot of things with it. But the bottom line is, like you see here, and that is Jasmine working with who? Working with Borks. And like it says, the Jasmine Smart Watch, which has been mentioned elsewhere in Jasmine materials, considering Borks his or has, I should say, already produced wearables and has been involved with Jasmine since when? 2017. When did Jasmine basically try to put all that stuff together? 2017. So they did it then. You better believe they're going to continue to do it now. We showed you the examples of back in 2022, what they were talking about with that, uh, you know, live television interview, right? I don't know if that was CNBC or whatnot, but again, that was all in English. And it says, this guy strongly su suspects that Jasmine Corporation is just waiting, absolutely waiting for the ecosystem to be ready before shipping this. Now think about this for a second. This might blow your mind away, or maybe you've already fallen asleep. I don't know. You know, it's getting kind of late. But what should blow your mind is working in the background, long time we had to wait to get the recent news in regards to Jasmine's, this new blockchain that they're trying to do. So when you hear the concept, like I talked about a lot yesterday, just waiting for the new ecosystem, like I always point out, having a platform or a new blockchain where projects can come build on your new blockchain is an absolute game changer that's why we always reference stellar sorbonne to see jasmine up in this mix i think is just like oh my gosh we talk about being bullish on something this is such an underrated project you guys will be in my opinion i know it sounds like i'm hyping stuff up but it, again like i've always said it the research hypes it for itself it speaks for itself these prices that we see and like what LeBron pointed out, right? You know, after September, you know, 2020, that rise, you know, going from those price levels that we saw in the past, in the low past 60,000 BTC, you know, you got to keep on Jasmine runs in correlation with that. But we also understand at some point we will reach a utility run. I think Jasmine is also part of that. But based on where they're at in the world, this stands out for them because Japan embraced blockchain and distribute ledger technologies. So am I too far off with the statement of Jasmine could be the one that gets us to the promised land before some of these other ones? And there's nothing wrong with that. This is why I don't want to be a maxi on anything. I want to be well diversified. So yes, strongly suspect that Jasmine Corp is just waiting for the ecosystem, which you literally you see developing a blockchain equals the next part of building out an ecosystem. And like it says, to be ready for shipping these, uh, you can see full 
for early specs of the Jasmine Borg smart wash here. And if anything, I'm going to bring that to you guys because this is good stuff. Let's pull this up. Let me double check the other screen to make sure that you can show up on your screen. Okay. And basically, here it is. Advent Bors LTE communication compatible Android smartwatch 4G Android will be exhibited at all the way back in like, you know, a while ago. Let me blow this up a little bit more. Hold on. See if I can make it nice and big for you guys without smearing it too much. Goes on to mention that Advent, which sells IT equipment such as MNOV business and smartphone personal computers, personal computers, announced that they will exhibit, at least back then, the LTE communication compatible smartwatch 4G Android developed by Bork of the United States, out of the United States, right? People always thought that this stuff was speculative about Jasmine ever having any type of partnership with anybody that had a connection to the United States. Boom, there you go. Sometimes you just got to take a blast in the past. Again, shout out to Neo X Tricks for doing the heavy lifting on this. We will consider joint development and market introduction in Japan. Boom, ready, done. I'm telling you guys, I, again, it's not me hyping it up. It seems like I am hyping it up, but the research speaks for itself. And it does it every single time when we come full circle into anything. You see that this has sensors. Again, the Internet of Things, Society 5.0. And who is part of the plug? Look at that, Qualcomm. Boom. You wanted to have something not just... You know, mention, mentioning like the partnership, but like, can you give me some more examples on the overview? Boom. Qualcomm. It literally says it right there. You know, that's not speculative. Does this page mention Jasmine? This page didn't mention Jasmine, Max. All right, we'll get to that. Advent was developed by Borks using what? Jasmine's platform at the CATEC 2016 held in Makuhari from October 4, 2016, in the booth of IoT that can be used immediately, proposed by TB Group Co. Limited. If anything, I might even try to reference that in a future show, see if there's any video. But look what's also mentioned right after that. There you go. Bajit. Ah, see, because of the, you know, if you click on stuff because of the interpretation, it messes it up. But anyway, yeah, Bajit. We talked about Bajit so many times. So many times, right? 4G Android smartwatch jointly reference exhibition. 4G Android smartwatch equipped, of course, with that LTE. Uh, does it mention anything more about Jasmine? Yes, it does. And it basically mentions that adopting the Android operating system not only makes it easy to reuse existing apps, but also makes it easy to develop new ones preparing a dedicated software development kit. Boris and Jasmine, the company, plans to widely recruit companies that are considering joint development and market introductions to Japan. Those who are in the know already know. And those who are flutters who will never know won't because they look at a chart and that's all they need to do. For me personally, I recognize that key strategic partnerships you don't see a lot mentioned in the mainstream news and even on crypto Twitter because... When projects are silent, what have we learned over the many, over a year now, right? When projects are silent, they are building. Perfect example is XDC. And look how that turned out. What about Jasmine? How, how is that going to turn out? For those that are in the know, again, guys, there's so much he, that's here. They've been trending a lot. We see the old partnerships. We see where it's going here soon in the modern time. Tell you the next step forward for Jasmine is some of these 5G, uh, either smartwatch or smart devices, obviously with um, the the phones and so on. But especially with them in their blockchain, like I've always said before, all you need is something like a Singularity Net, you know, like an Ajax or something like that, a premier quality project to build out your ecosystem. And sky's the limit, absolutely, sky is the limit. Let me know what you guys think. Is the Jasmine management team too far off with their predictions of a crazy $17 sometime in 26 or 2016, 2026? Or are we just going to be satisfied with 
a dollar, whatever the case be, know what you have, know why you hold it. But for me, I got DCA that much more into Jasmine because I recognize there's some big things coming up. And that's why we did show you at the beginning of the show for the live show. You know, yeah, keep in mind, we're going to do a chopped up version of what they recorded. But we showed you guys some of those key things in regards to the overall market. Just because you're not personally invested into Bitcoin, you might just do the altcoins. We pay attention to all of it because we want to see where the indicators are and where we're going here soon. So with that said, I think that concludes the Jasmine coverage. It does. And with that also said, that is going to conclude and wind down the show. Thank <laughs> you.